Do you ever notice when you ask questions to your prospects, you think they're good, but they give you vague, generalized, surface level answers? You ask a question like, yeah, yeah. You ask another question, well, yeah, I don't know. They're just kind of vague. There's a reason why that's happening and it all has to do with, you know what? It's gonna sound kind of crazy, but your tonality. Because your tone is how your prospect interprets the intention behind everything you say and every question you ask. That's how they interpret why you're asking the question in the first place. Now, I'm gonna show you today, come over here to the Vibe Board here, lovevibeboard.com. Doing a sponsorship deal with you guys pretty soon. There's five types of tone. There's many types of tone, but there's five main types of tone. If you wanna become a top 1% salesperson, in your industry, okay? Or if you're a company that's wanting to scale, like to become the market leader and stay on top of everybody else, you've got to master these five types of tone. You've got a confused tone. Jeremy, why would I sound confused? I have to sound like the expert all the time. Well, I'm gonna show you in certain context when you have a confused tone, it actually triggers your prospect's brain to say, oh, he didn't understand what I meant by that. I need to clarify that better. Oh, and we get them to open up emotionally. I'm gonna show you how to do that here. There's a tone, you've gotta to learn how to have a curious tone, okay? You've gotta to have to learn how to have a challenging tone in certain aspects. You're not gonna have a challenging tone in the first two minutes of a conversation with the prospect and you have zero trust or credibility. I'll show you when to do that. You're gonna have a concern tone, a tone that shows more empathy in certain contexts. And sometimes you need a playful tone. Oh my gosh, what am I gonna do with you? Playful tone, I'll show you what I mean by that as well. Now, the most important part when I train you this, cause I'm gonna show you some industry specific questions and how to shift your tone based on the context to trigger different emotional drivers in your prospects mind, get them to let their guard down. Oh, you might want to learn this if you want to sell more. Now, the really important part here is I'm going to show you, I want you to pay attention to my facial expressions and my body language when I use different tone, because your facial expressions are the remote control. They're the remote control to how your tonality comes across. You can't have a confused tone and your face is like this, like with no movement, okay? Watch your favorite actress or actress in a movie, you're gonna notice that their facial expressions are changing their tonality. If I have to, if I want a challenging tone and I'm sitting here, what if you don't do anything about, like I can't have a challenge, what happens if you don't do anything about this? See, my facial expression causes my tone to change and shift. I'm gonna show you to do that. All right, let's get in here. All right, the first thing I'm gonna show you right here, and I'm also gonna show you how to do this. This is an example of what we call NEPQ verbal pacing. Most of you, the reason why you get a lot of surface level answers from your prospects is because one, the questions you ask, now I realize it's not your fault, you were trained that way, but it is your what? It is your problem, right? So a lot of times when you ask questions, you ask them too fast and the prospect has no time to internalize what you're asking. So they just give you a knee jerk reaction. So I have to slow the question down. I have to have what's called verbal pauses in between certain words that cause the prospect to hang on to every single word I'm about to say. As an example of verbal pausing, okay? All right, so let's say if you sold, uh, let's say you sold for a marketing agency. I'm just gonna show you some random examples here, all right? This is an example of what's called an NEPQ problem awareness question. So look at this, okay? So, I mean, you've been with XYZ Company for the past five years. I mean, they're, they're fairly decent. I mean, what's caused you to feel like they're not gonna be able to help scale you? Now, what did I just do there? I did a few things here, I'm gonna show you, okay? Now, what type of tone? I actually use two types of tone. It's kind of a confused tone slash concern. Like, I'm confused, I don't understand. They're fairly decent. What's caused you to feel like you might wanna look at someone else? Now, that question causes them to do what? Tell me, but more importantly, tell themselves why the company they're with is not gonna be able to scale them or why they're looking at different companies, right? So it's like I'm kind of pushing them away to get them to pull me back in. But look at the tone. If I said it like this, so you've been with XYZ company for five years, I mean, they're fairly decent. What's caused you to feel like there's not gonna be, they're not gonna be able to scale your business? Well, you know, we just, I'm not sure. We just always wanna look around. See, it's 
too fast of a question. There's no tonality. I'm not changing their, my emotions to trigger their emotions, okay? And I'm saying so fast, they don't have any time to internalize it. But pay attention to how I do it again. So, I mean, you've been with, you've been with XYZ Company the last five years. I mean, they're, they're fairly decent. I mean, what's caused you to feel like they're not going to be able to scale your company? See? Concern. See how I end it with a concern tone. Remember, if my tone is how the prospect interprets the intention behind the question, they feel that I'm concerned for them not being able to scale. Now, the first part, I'm like confused. I'm not understanding. Now, why does a confused tone work in this context? Okay. I'm not saying you have a confused tone like, oh, uh, you're in the presentation like, oh, uh, I don't know how it works. I'm not sure what we do. I'm confused. Like, obviously, you're not going to be confused like that. But that type of confused tone, okay. I mean, you've been with XYZ Company. What's caused you to, like, you're, you're not understanding. Now, what happens is in their brain, their subconscious mind, I'm a, well, I went to college for behavioral science. I do know a little bit about the brain. What their subconscious mind does there at that point is it says, Oh, he didn't understand what I meant by that. I need to clarify that better. Oh, he didn't understand why I'm looking around for something else. I need to explain that better. I need to clarify that. If our whole point of the conversation is get the prospect to what? Open up emotionally. If I can't get them to clarify and tell me their pain, relive the pain, they don't feel any need to what? change. And if they feel no need to change, that's why you get so many objections. That's why you lose sales you could be making. You see where I'm at? Okay. That's a confused tone. Now, let me show you a crazy thing I did here. Why would I say fairly decent? Why not say, oh, the company you're with is a really good company. Well, that's not going to help you. But it's also not going to help you say, yeah, that company sucks. They're horrible. Because a lot of times, well, they look at you like, well, of course you're going to say that. You're, you're a salesperson. You're biased, right? But if I'm like, well, I mean, they're, they're fairly decent. What did I just see there with my tone? That's almost like a, like a concerned, skeptical tone. That I might know something about the company they're with that they don't know that's not very good, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying it because I don't want to. You see what I'm doing? Well, they're fairly decent. See, I'm automatically seeding what in that prospect's brain? I'm seeding doubt. See how I can see doubt by not telling them how bad the company uh, they're with is, but I seed it strictly by my tone. You might want to pay attention. All right, I got a, a bunch more here. Let's say uh, this is an NEPQ problem awareness question. Let's say I'm a real estate agent and I'm trying to get a listing, okay? Now, let's say I knock on the door, okay? Or no, no, let's just say I have an appointment. I've knocked on the door. Let's say I've knocked on the door or called a lead or whatever, and I'm into the conversation. It's not going to be the first question you're going to ask. I mean, I mean, Susie, I mean, your, your home is, is, I mean, it's a really beautiful home. I mean, what's caused you to feel like you might want to sell it? Well, I mean, it's a beautiful home, but the reason why we want to sell it is, see, what am I doing there? That confused slash concerned tone causes that homeowner to tell me why they want to sell, but more importantly, who do they tell? They're telling themselves why they want to sell, which is more persuasive, you telling them why they should sell? or them telling themselves why they should sell. I think you know the answer. When they tell themselves it's their idea, not yours. That's how you eliminate people like buying something from you and then when you leave because you pressured them, they, you're gone, now that pressure wears off and they decide to cancel, okay? So when you learn these type of questions with this type of tone, it causes the prospect to pull you in. Let me show you a bunch of other examples. Let's say if you sold life insurance. I mean, I could show this for every industry on the planet, even yours. We train your industry as well. I mean, let's say if you sold life insurance and you find out they already have a 100K work policy. Well, I know if I sell life insurance that if, if I don't get them to tell me why that's not going to be enough, I might get an objection at the end like, well, I mean, we do have the work life insurance policy. Maybe we'll look at this later. So I've got to eliminate that from their brain. I mean, I mean, John, you guys have this 100K work policy. I mean, what's caused you to feel like that's not going to be enough? Well, I mean, it's a good thing, but I mean, it's, it's not going to be enough because I mean, you know, our bills are this and, and they start explaining to themselves why that's not going to be enough. Now, if I'm selling life insurance and they, and I can get them to tell me why whatever they have is not enough, that's probably a good thing for you to sell them more life insurance, which they need anyways. Oh, let me show you another example here. I can show you this for every industry. Let's say if you're a door-to-door -door salesperson, all right, I'm training a ton in this space as well. This is an example of what's called an NEPQ pattern interrupt. 
Now, what do most salespeople do that knock on the door? Hi, are you the homeowner here? Yeah, I'm the homeowner. Um, yeah, hey, I'm, uh, my name is Jeremy Miner. I'm with XYZ Company, and we're out here in your neighborhood. Your prospects aren't even listening past that point because you know what just happened? Salesperson trying to sell me something and they go into fight or flight mode, protection mode. It's a defensive mechanism. Do you ever get that if you sell door to door where they're like, hi, my name is, I'm with XYZ Company. The reason why we're out in your neighbor is, oh, not interested. Solar, not interested. Alarms, not interested. Oh, pest control, we already have that. Oh, lawn care service, we already have that. Whatever it is, not interested. They don't even hear what you're saying because your tone sounds like everybody else. So I need to interrupt the pattern to trigger curiosity, okay? I learned how to do this. My first job was selling home security systems door to door, became the number one rep in the nation actually very, very quickly as a college student because I learned how to pattern interrupt, all right? I did have an advantage. I was learning behavioral science in college, so I learned all this stuff. So when they knocked on the door, first of all, I wouldn't look like a salesperson. I even had a construction vest on, the orange one or the lime green one, the grandpa shoes, you know, the old white balance, new balanced uh, white shoes like the grandpas wear. You know, I had like just the khaki shorts. I just didn't look like a salesperson. So when I knocked on the door, had like a clipboard here and everything, like I was had like a piece of paper with five or six questions. I'd be looking around. Like if I sold roofing, I'd probably be looking at the roof. If I sold solar, I might be looking at the roof too for panels. If I sold pest control, might be looking at the ant mounds in the yard or looking out in the yard or the cobwebs for spiders. You see, you're, you're looking like you're not a salesperson. You don't want to be like this. So I'd be to the side, like six, seven feet back. They'd come to the door and I'd be like, yeah, are you guys the, um, are you guys the, the property owners here? They'd be like, yeah, we're the, we're the owners. What's going on? Pattern interrupt. I just interrupted the pattern and triggered massive curiosity strictly by using a confused tone and verbal pacing and verbal pausing. Are you starting to get it? All right. Now, if you want a, uh, more of this type of stuff, here's my suggestion. If you end up subscribing to this channel, I'm going to give you a word of advice. Do not share this channel with people you compete with. So if you've got a buddy or a friend that sells for a competing company, you probably don't want to share this channel with them because you don't want them to learn what I'm going to show you. Now, if you want to share it with other people that are in a completely different industry that you don't compete with, by all means, share it with them. But he you subscribe, don't share it with your friends if you compete with them. You don't want them to know this stuff. Okay, you will have a competitive advantage over them for sure. All right, verbal pauses. Let me show you how to do this. Most of you have been taught this. Hey, let me ask you a question. What do you use now for? And you just bulldoze. You're like, let me ask you something and then you ask it, okay? I want to show you how to change this where you trigger massive curiosity. This is another example of a pattern interrupt using a curious tone now. Can I, um, can I ask you something? Uh, sure, what's going on? Can I, um, can I ask you something? Curious tone. Prospects hanging on to every word. Now when I ask them the question, they're like, oh my gosh, what's he going to ask me? See what I'm doing there? I'm triggering curiosity by using my tone. Now, another thing that you have to learn is what's called verbal cues. Verbal cues are important when you're asking questions. If you don't want to sound like a scripted robot, what I would suggest you don't want to sound because prospects, as you know, if you sound scripted, sounds like you're interrogating them like an FBI agent, they do what? Hey, you know, enough with the questions. Can you just tell me how much it's going to cost? And I'll tell you if I'm interested. So you're triggering that from your tonality and not knowing how to bridge from question to question. So verbal cues are like, ah, but how long have you had that issue with the XYZ? Uh-huh. Okay, but before that happened, what were you guys doing about actually solving the ABC problem? Oh, you did, but what did your boss do when you said that to him? And then at that point, what had happened? See, I'm verbal cueing from question to question. Ah, but what happened when you... See, the verbal cue comes right before the next question because most salespeople do what? They ask a question, the prospect answers, and then they pause two seconds. And they're like, okay, cool, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, let me ask you, or okay, yeah, awesome. Uh, I'm curious, John. And you sound like a scripted robot. You sound like a salesperson, okay? So I have to, right, ah, uh, okay, mm, interesting, really, right. Now I'm not doing that right in a row. Okay, but when that happened, 
What did your boss say to you at that point? Oh, they did. How long has that been going on for? Oh, it's been going on for five years. So since that's been going on five years, has that had a, has that had a impact on you? Well, in what way though? See, I'm bridging from question to question. What bridging does is it makes the conversation sound so natural that the prospect just, their guard never comes up because they feel like they're talking to their best friend or their grandpa or their uncle or their mom or dad. The guard stays down because they feel it's a natural conversation. It's a natural conversation, but it's a very structured and skilled conversation. They just don't know. And it keeps them on the right track. All right, so let me give you an example of a playful tone. You're probably like, why would I need a playful tone, Jeremy? That makes zero sense. What are you talking about, you crazy guy? All right, now, playful tone is typically used when you wanna get the prospect's guard down, okay? So let's say I get on Zoom. I have an inbound appointment, um, and let's say what in this example, well, it could be an example. Let's say I'm on Zoom, and the prospect gets on there, and they're like, hey, how you doing today? What would you say? You'd be like, oh, I'm really doing good. I'm working hard, you know, just helping people, drinking lots of coffee. Now, that's not bad. It doesn't hurt you, but it doesn't really help you. What can I do to get them to emotionally start to open up and humanize that conversation and get them to let their guard down. I'm not gonna make stand-up uh, comedy jokes. You probably don't wanna do that because you probably are not a stand-up comedian. But like, hey, how you doing, Jeremy? Oh, you know, just hanging out, being boring over here. What about you? What are you doing? Oh, I'm sure you're not being boring. See what I just did there? Oh, you know, just hanging out, being the boring guy. What about you? Oh, gosh, I'm sure you're not boring. Now, if I didn't use a playful tone, check out how it sounds. Oh, you know, just hanging out, being the boring guy over here. What about you? Whoa, you are kind of boring. That's awkward. But my playful tone triggers a different emotion that prospect's brain. Oh, you know, just hanging out, being the boring guy. What about you? You being boring over there? Oh, gosh, I'm sure you're not boring, Jeremy. Guard goes down. More trust, right? See how I kind of pushed him away? They pulled me back in. Now, let me give you another example. Oh, how you doing today, Jeremy? Oh, you know, just trying to stay out of trouble. What about you? You get in trouble over there, John? Oh, I'm sure you're not a troublemaker. No, I'm always in trouble. You know, my wife told, see, guard goes down because of the playful tone. Now, let's say, what if you're bald? Use a chair. I wish I was bald. I'm like, if I would have been bald, I, you know, I could have sold more. Oh, you know, just surfing the web, looking for a better hairspray. What about you? Oh, <laughs> yeah, you know, when my uncle went bald, we used to make fun of him all the time. Guard goes down. Now, that's if they can see you. You wouldn't say that if they can't see you because it wouldn't make any sense. See, I can do this with anything. Let's say if I'm on with the prospect and uh, I'm like, uh, and they don't turn on their Zoom. If I'm on an inbound appointment, a Zoom appointment, a, a calendar lead or whatever, and they won't turn on their Zoom, I get on there like, I, I can't, um, uh, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. and uh, hey, I'm having a hard time seeing you. Is your video broken? No, I just, uh, you know, I don't like to turn my video on. Well, what's going on over there? It's 3.30, are you still in your pajamas, Sandy? Oh, <laughs> no, I'm not in my pajamas. A lot of times they'll just turn it on right there. See, lower guard, playful tone, all right? You see what I'm doing there? Okay, let's keep on going here. All right, now, how do you have a curious tone? Let me show you the difference with a curious tone. Okay, so let's say if I'm a lead broker and I'm selling leads to a company or maybe I'm selling leads to a real estate agent or whoever, right? Network marketers. So walk me through. What are, what are you guys doing now to, to generate new leads and clients? See, that's just a straight curious tone. The curious tone causes the prospect to interpret that I'm genuinely curious. That's why I'm asking the question, all right? That's an example of an NEPQ situation question. I'll give you a couple more here. Now, what about a challenging tone? When do you use a challenging tone? You can't really use a challenging tone in the first couple of minutes of a conversation. Why? Because you haven't really built any trust or credibility. But halfway through, three-fourths of the way through that conversation, I've built a gap from maybe where they are to where they want to be. I've helped them relive their pain of the problem and see what the future looks like once the newfound problems are solved, future pacing. Let's say if I sold staffing, I, I work for a staffing or recruiting agencies, and I recruit, uh, you know, let's see, operations people or sales people or marketing people for companies and the companies obviously pay you for that, okay? So I might uh, find out that this company I'm trying to get a contract with to recruit employees for them, that they're having a lot of flaky employees, that the current company they use for staffing is giving them a lot of like really bad people for those positions 
and they're just not doing their job. And they want to scale, let's say, to 15 million a month, and they're at 10 right now. But these employees that are they're hiring, they're just not very good. They don't feel like they're going to take them to that next level. So, I mean, what what happens if you don't do anything about this, and you they keep giving you those flaky employees? I mean, how will you guys get to 15 million a month without the best people? Let me do it again. Challenging tone. So I'm going to start with a challenging tone up here. Now, why do I do that? Because once I get them to see what the future looks like with my solution awareness questions or future pacing, they feel it. They see what the future looks like. Once they have the best people, I want to rip that away from them with a consequence question that gets them to defend themselves on why they need to change now, which builds more urgency for them to buy now, not later. So what happens if, if your company what are the ramifications if your company doesn't do anything about this and they keep hiring these, I think you said, flaky employees? How, how will you guys ever get to $15 million a month without the best people? See, challenging tone. And then at the end, right here, I went down into a concern tone. Now, why would I switch to a concern tone here? Because the concern tone, that's how, a tone that shows empathy. The concern tone is how they interpret why I'm asking this question that I'm concerned that if they don't do anything, the problem stays the same and they never get what they said they wanted. They generally feel like I'm concerned for them about the consequence, which triggers more trust they have in you, the salesperson. See where we're going with that. Trust is where the sales made. Now, concern tone. Where do we use a concern tone? Okay, so let's say the prospect says this, you know, this is causing so much pressure on me. Pressure? See, I can repeat back the emotional word. Anytime the prospect gives you an emotional word, pressure, concern, worried, stressed, frustrated, anxiety, okay, tension. See, those are all examples of emotions. So I want them to clarify that emotion. Why would I want them to clarify their emotions to me? Well, every sale is made by, every buying decision is based on emotion, not logic. We all have heard that, right? Brain studies prove that. Every decision you make starts with your emotion. You feel like a drink of water. So I start, I feel like a drink. So I start to make the decision with my emotional side of my brain. I feel like watching a TikTok video. So I pick up my phone. Has nothing to do with logic. Do you see what we're doing? I feel like I can't get to 15 million a month in revenue. So I might need to talk with the salesperson. See, every decision starts with your emotional side of your brain, not your logic. Okay, so look at what I'm doing here. So I just repeat it. Pressure? See, I'm concerned, the concern tone. Oh my gosh, yeah, you don't know the pressure that's been going on. How long, is that, how long has that been going on for, Barb? See, see my hand on my chest here? That is a body language signal that signifies that you are concerned for their situation. When they feel you're genuinely concerned, they start to trust you more. When the prospect trusts you more, they trust that you can get them the best result. They trust you, right? That's how you build trust by your tone and the questions you ask, not by asking them who won the game last night or talking about their daughter who got married or what their favorite dog is in the beginning or how their day's going. Those are just predictable questions every salesperson asks. You're not building trust with that. Quite opposite, actually, okay? Every salesperson uses them. How long has that been going on for? See, I'm concerned. Oh my, and they say, oh, it's been going on for five years. Oh, that's been going on for five years. What, what's it doing to you? Oh my gosh, the stress is enormous. See what I'm doing there, concern tone, okay? Or I could use this question right here. Let's say if I can't uh, get them to move forward, they keep procrastinating, I might, I, lean, I might lean in the final example. What's really holding you back from moving forward? See that concern tone. But if I'm like, what's really holding you back, John, from moving forward? Oh, I don't know, it's just a big decision. What's really holding you back? from moving forward. Well, Jeremy, you know, to be honest with you, well, thank you for being honest with me, George. See, I can trigger that emotion. Anytime a prospect says, you know, just to be honest with you, you know what you want to say? Well, thank you for being honest with me. I'd hope you'd be honest with me. You have to use a playful tone. If you're like, thank you for being honest with me, I'd hope you'd be honest with me. Oh, that's kind of like an insult, right? But if I'm like, well, thank you for being honest. I hope you'd be honest with me. What did I just do? I just also seeded what? That I'm honest by doing that. See what I'm doing there, okay? All right, hope that helped you. 
You want to subscribe to this channel? Like I said, my word of advice is this. Do not share this channel where I train you this type of stuff with anybody you compete with. Because if you go up against them and they start to learn this stuff week after week, month after month, year after year, and you don't know it, you're going to compete with people you don't want to compete with. So I do realize you guys like to share stuff like this. Only share it to somebody that's in sales or business that does not compete in your industry. Hope that helped you today. The five types of tonality. If you master tonality, you can become, well, you can, you can make a lot more sales than you are now and you get to help a lot of people. That's a cool thing. So hope that helped you today.